Peace tech lovers, TechTube here back with a new video. So I'm sure that we have many Android users out there wondering when they can upgrade their Android to the next Android version. The good news is Android 10 is now rolling out for Google's Pixel phones, packing tons of great new features. And hopefully you're ready, so let's get started. Android 10 is rolling out right now exclusively for Google's Pixel phones, with more devices to gain the latest version of Android in the near future. Google recently announced Android 10 as the official name, replacing Android Q and the dessert naming scheme Google has always used. Operating system updates like Android 10 add new features and capabilities that can be refreshing if you are growing tired of your phone. Google released the first beta of Android Q back in March this year, and it has been tested all along and it's ready now to be used across most recent Android devices. From a new Bubbles notification feature, full on gesture navigation, improved privacy settings, and a slick live caption feature, actually there is a lot to like about Android 10. So let's take a look at these new features, starting with dark mode. Android 10 dark theme gives you a black screen and alters the other colors in apps either to developer set dark theme colors or Android defaults if not. This not only makes it easier on your eyes when the lights are low, it can also conserve smartphone power. As your device's battery is not working away to keep the screen lit up. And it also turns on automatically on Pixel handsets when you activate your phone's battery saving mode. Next is Bubbles. Bubbles are a new style of notification which looks similar to Facebook Messenger's chat head feature. If you are using one app, notifications for a second app will pop up not in the top bar of the phone but as a circular icon. When you tap the bubble, it will launch a cut down version of the relevant app where you can then attend to whatever the notifications drawing your attention to, for example replying to a message and then close the bubble and carry on with your first task. So people who would like to multitask will find this one interesting. Next is gestures. Google is trying to get users to move to gesture-based navigation from physical or virtual buttons. In Android 10, these gestures have been refined. Apps, whether designed for Android 10 specifically or not, will all work with gesture control. With the option for them to override the system level gestures for specific areas of the display, this means that in some apps, you might need to use different gestures to navigate if the developers have customized or disabled part of the default control scheme. Apps that want to use the full screen, like mobile games, can even suspend all normal gesture controls until you swipe up from the bottom of the phone to re-enable them. So that is handy for avoiding backing out of your game in the heat of the moment. Next is Biometrics. In apps that use biometrics like fingerprint scan or facial recognition, Google is now given the option for developers to stop their apps from repeatedly asking you to give fingerprints or face confirmations. Alternatively, the developers can force a reconfirmation if you try to do certain actions. For example, making a big purchase. And if your phone's playing up and your camera or fingerprint reader are not functioning, developers can add in a fallback. So you can authenticate your actions with a pen or a password instead, making sure you're not logged out of your phone's functions as a side effect of other problems. Next is live caption. If you watch videos with the sound muted, Android 10 adds a feature that will allow you to still follow along with what's being said. Live captions will appear in almost real time and that closed captioning will take place entirely on your phone without the reliance on the cloud speech recognition. That should also benefit people with impaired hearing or anyone straining to hear a video in a noisy environment. And the way Google has pulled off this feature sounds quite clever. This feature will work with video, podcasts, and audio messages across any app with a single tap. Google also says the feature will work with videos you shoot yourself. Once speech is detected, captions start appearing on your phone screen automatically. On the other hand, accessibility. It is important that smartphones do not needlessly make themselves difficult or impossible to use for people with various mental or physical disabilities, which is why accessibility features are a necessary addition. New features to Android 10 include extra text-to-speech feedback in certain situations, and the ability to enable accessibility mode 
with swiping gestures and keyboard controls. We also have autofill. Having your phone automatically type out your information is pretty useful. And Google's giving Android 10 the ability to make it work with a wider variety of methods that apps and sites can use to ask you for your password. And we recognize when you enter the last digits of your credit card number and save them too. Also, when you update a password, Android 10 will be smart enough to update the relevant entry rather than saving a fresh one and leaving you confused as to which one's the correct one. Next is audio and video. Android 10 has also changed how the microphone behaves and allows for one app to take over control of the microphone or other input device while the other remains running or in some cases that both apps can listen and record from the microphone simultaneously. This will allow you to still use Google Assist while on a call without any problem. And in certain kinds of app notifications, developers can now add a seeker bar letting you skip through parts of a podcast or a music track without having to open the app fully, which can save you a lot of time moving from one app to the other. Next is multi display. This feature is partly intended for a future where foldable devices use multiple screens at once, but also for existing applications like using a smartphone and a monitor in tandem. Developers can specify which display should be used for which tasks, and what happens if a user switches between display while using an app. Next is Wi-Fi and connectivity. There have been some under the hood changes to Wi-Fi in Android 10, which Google says will make it faster and more secure to connect to other devices. Handy if you have got a full house of smart home tech that needs controlling through certain apps. It's now also easier to give your Wi-Fi password to someone else using the settings menu. Under the Wi-Fi section, you can share the password in the form of a QR code or read one such QR code to connect to his Wi-Fi. No more turning your router this way or that way to find the sticker with the password on it. Finally, we have privacy. The access storage permission, which you have likely tapped through a few times when apps requested the use of data stored on your phone, has now been split to individual folders including photos, videos, audio and downloads. So the apps have no more access than they need to have. Apps also no longer leap into the foreground while you are using another app. The most an app can now do is give a notification that it wants to do something. You have the option of marking notifications as silent so they won't actually make noise or appear on your phone's lock screen. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, do not forget to like the video and leave me a comment with your feedback and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.